Hello Interwebs, welcome to a Let's Fix Computers. I've got a compact tower here, a HP compact. It's a CQ2000 series and this is power cycling. So um, I don't know if you can hear it on the mic, but if you watch the power light there, it turns on and then it turns off and then it turns on again. There it goes. And that's it. That's what it does. And it's just sitting there turning on and off. There's no output at all. Uh, there's no beeps. There's no other signs of life. It just sits there and power cycles. So this computer's not particularly nice, if I'm honest. It's a Windows 8 era PC. It's an Intel Pentium. Um, we're kind of looking at this more as a professional curiosity thing because I would absolutely... Like, it's from the start of that era where they started doing these wretched PCs with no power supply, but a big laptop power supply going to the input. So it's mostly a mobile p computer inside. I'll, I'm willing to wager that it might even have sodium in it. But yeah, either way, we're looking at this more of a curiosity because this channel is about learning how to fix PCs. So here's a broken PC. Let's see what's wrong with it. So uh, I'll put this flat on the desk now. We'll take a look inside and see what we can find. Well, it does have uh, actual desktop memory in it, but as you can see, there's not a lot in here, except a lot of dust. Good grief. Just, ah, uh, they're horrid, these things. Okay, let's turn it off first. Um, so that is a lot of dust on that CPU there. That's just caked in there. Um, so obviously a lot of people are going to be like, oh, that CPU's cooked. It's a desktop CPU. It's never the CPU, except when it is. Um, so I'm confident that like this CPU is a Pentium. It's probably only like a 40 watt TDP or something like that. So it's probably going to be okay despite this horrifyingness. As a desktop computer, it's not like this thing is running under full load all the time. Although that much being said, we have to consider the fact that because it's a Pentium, just opening up Chrome will load down this CPU. So in a way, it kind of does see full load at times. Um, let's start with the obvious first. I'm going to reset the BIOS. Um, and I know everyone's screaming at me going, oh my god, get the dust out of there. Yeah, we'll sort that out in a minute. Overheating is not the problem right now. If if that dust has caused a problem, then it's already dead. So I'm not going to I'm not going to spend the next 15 to 20 minutes disassembling this cooler and systematically cleaning it when this whole thing might be just a, a non-starter. Let's pop out that uh, BIOS battery. There we go. Take that guy out. Um, I should probably check this, actually. Ideally, you should check BIOS batteries in circuit because the voltage can sag a little bit under load. Um, however, uh, we'll just do a quick out-of-circuit test now while it's out the computer. 3.15 out of circuit. So that might dip down to 3.1, maybe a little bit lower in circuit. However, it's it's easily above three. I'm confident that this is not a flat BIOS battery. So somewhere on this motherboard, there would have been a CMOS reset jumper, I'd imagine. Um, not entirely sure where, but I still contend that just popping out the battery is still the most reliable way to do it. Um, uh, although that much being said, if I ever, like once you have take, one, when you're trying to do a BIOS reset, one of the first signs that you're looking for after a BIOS reset is some kind of indication that it has reacted to the BIOS reset so you know that it actually took. Um, and so, you know, if, if you work on a computer and like if you're trying to reset the BIOS and it doesn't look like it's reset, that's the point where you start going, OK, let's try the jumper or the reset switch. Or if you started out with a jumper, then you try taking the battery out and so on. And you'll find a way that works. Um, there's many ways of doing it, and if one method doesn't work, you try the next. So there is no right way, but taking the battery out is just my preferred. Urgh. Right, let's give that a whirl. If this doesn't work, I'm probably going to dust it out, I think, just because the dust might be interfering with memory and stuff like that. Let's see what it does. That's not promising. I'll give it another cycle just in case because 
uh, after a BIOS reset, you're going to get RAM training and stuff like that. So one or two power cycles is normal after a BIOS reset. No, that's a no-go. Okay. Let's unplug these drives. And I'll just pop out the power connectors. Oh, oh those don't want to go. Okay, fine. I'll take them out the other end, just so we're not constantly power cycling the drives. And I'm going to pop out the memory modules. Ow. What are we guessing? Two gigs or four? Oh, God, those are really stiff. Oh, you know what? That's eight gigs. I'm suitably impressed. Right. <clears throat> so these are a little bit dusty, but uh, not to anything that I would consider problematic. I'm going to brush them down. And I'm just going to go in with a toothbrush and just brush the dust out of the dim slots. It's not very often I get a win by reseating the memory, but it's very easy to do. And I used to get wins all the time doing this. When I used to service um, uh, computers in state schools, uh, where I'd go around to, you know, like every other day I'd, um, I'd drive out to a school and spend like three or four hours there just doing maintenance on all of the PCs on the premises. Um, every now and then there would be one of them that wasn't starting. And so often if there was a computer that wasn't posting, reseat the memory comes back to life again. Um, so in volume, it's a very common fault. It's always worth a try. All right, power in. Let's try it again. That still looks like a no. I mean, it might have cooked. All right, that's enough of that. Uh, let's see. I think we're going to have to actually clean it. Yeah, I'm going to take the CPU cooler off, and then I'm going to take this out of the back and just airline all the dust out. I think it's actually... We're going to inspect the CPU. Maybe that will just want reseating or something. Uh, so we've got some T10s on that. Oh, it's a bit bigger than that. That's like a T12 or something like that, but T10 is good enough. Thermal paste is bone dry. Yeah, that's not a great sign if I'm honest. Maybe it is the CPU. Maybe it is. All right, uh, I shall take this out of the back and airline it. Right, dust free. That dust actually came out quite easily, which was nice. I'm gonna stick some alcohol on the CPU to remove that thermal paste and we'll just see what CPU this actually is. We know it's a Pentium, but I wanna know what generation it is just to see if I've actually got any test CPUs around that I can drop in there. I might have something that will work in this so we can actually determine if this CPU has genuinely cooked or not. It is a Pentium G645T. I shall take it out and inspect it. Socket looks good, although we no reason to believe it wouldn't be. All right. G645T. Uh, I need to look up what generation that is um, because I, I have, I don't know my Pentiums at all. Um, and obviously, the the if it was like an i an i3 or an i5, it would have the series on it. It would be you know an an, an i3 6100 or something like that. And you'd be like, cool, that's sixth gen Pentiums. Who heckin knows? Uh, right, I'll put that back in. That's just reseated. And I'll clean up the bottom of the cooler and we'll just perch that on top, spin it up again and see if anything has changed just from reseating the CPU. 
Um, and again, like you might go, oh, you haven't done anything. You just took the CPU out and put it back in again. Yeah, that can fix things. It's surprising. Ah, this cooler's not going to go on without being screwed down properly. And I don't want to do that because it's probably coming off again. I shall get my test cooler. These uh, Arctic Freezer style coolers are good test coolers because with no mounting hardware on them, as you can see, they will just sit on top of the CPU. So I can just put that on there like that. And then just make sure that the, power, that the CPU won't immediately go, you know, which it won't anyway. Um, CPUs will throttle back and so far as I know like it takes a it takes a minute or so for a CPU to actually build enough heat to have any problems but as always there's no point in doing stupid stuff that you don't need to it costs nothing just to perch a cooler on top and obviously we get to see the fan spin so that shows us more behavior as well okay um, we've got monitor I guess I'll plug in keyboard and mouse again because why not let's go Power cycle again. That's not promising. It's a bummer. I can't even plug in a uh, postcode card to this because it's got no PCI slots. Nah, that's a no. Is the CPU warming up at all? I don't think so. Out of curiosity. There's a little bit of warmth in the CPU. I wouldn't say it's heating up, but it's definitely above ambient, which tells me that it's getting power. Okay, so what the hell is a Pentium G645T? 645T. It is Sandy Bridge, which is... Oh, I can never remember. Is Sandy Bridge second or third? Uh, Sandy Bridge is second gen, so it's second gen Intel. And I think I might have one. I'm just going to go and quickly raid another system I've got. Right, that's a no on the alternative CPU. I've got some first gen stuff kicking around. <clears throat> but I didn't have anything that's compatible with this, which is unfortunate. Um, I'm going to stick the cooler back on this. I'm going to put some thermal paste on and cooler down again. Uh, there we go. Please rate my thermal paste pattern in the comments down below. Um, <clears throat> if it is the CPU, I don't have a CPU to test with, and I sure as heck ain't buying one in for this computer. Um, so I'm just going to stick this back on. Um, we're going to go for um, I'm going to go for some different memory because I haven't tried different memory yet, um, and I probably should have by now. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to start looking at BIOS flashing, which is a long shot, but yeah. With all that dust on the CPU, it's very easy to believe that surely this must be a dead CPU. But honestly, CPUs don't die. I really don't think it is. All right, that's on. Let's pop out this memory and put in an DDR3 module. Ugh, that'll do. Uh, all right, power on. Let's just see if it does anything different at all. It doesn't feel like memory to me, but I'm basing that on a gut feeling, not on any kind of logic. That was a very quick power cycle. Ah, those were RAM training power cycles. Okay, we're getting somewhere. It's memory. It's very upset. Oh, it stopped beeping. I don't think we're going to get anything out of the monitor right now, but I'll, I'll assume that's a no. Uh, I'm going to move that to the other memory slot. I should have gone in with different memory earlier on in this diagnostic session. But I tell you, bad memory. Two, three, four, five, six, 
six long beeps. I'm not going to bother looking that up, it's going to be memory. It started beeping when we started filling with the memory, so it's going to be a memory error. Um, it could be anyway. I should check that. I'm going to quickly Google that just in case, because we might have a we might have another problem. Now we've got uh, well, we've got some memory in that might work. <laughs> I don't know if this memory works. Uh, compact six long beeps. Uh, six beeps at the power on self test indicate a video issue. That's on some Z two hundred thing. All right, at a quick look around, I can't find anything useful for beep codes on this, so I'm going to pop out that memory module and try one of the original ones. And we're going to start going through the memory ritual, which is one slot, uh, one module at a time in each slot. And we'll just see what kind of behavior we get. Same thing. Now let's move it to the other slot. Okay. Now let's try the other module, first slot. Okay. Next slot. It's not beeping, but it's not power cycling either. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, what happens if I put both in? The first CPU receipt didn't do anything, so why, why are we getting different behavior now? Okay, I'm going to reset the BIOS again. Battery back out again. Uh, I'm doing the BIOS reset a second time because we've got different behavior now. Uh, I'm not sure why we have different behavior because I took the CPU out the first time, put it back in, no change. Um, and then the second time after I reseated the cooler and stuff, now we are getting different behavior. So I'm not quite sure where we're up to right now, if I'm honest. Um, but let's just keep trying different things and see if we can gather more information. Battery back in. Power back in. Quick power cycles, it's memory training. Uh, we're back on our beeps. Just going to plug in a keyboard with a caps lock light on it and just see if that responds. It does. Okay, so this tells us that the computer isn't brain dead and I think it's actually might be posting and we've just got no video out. Um, I'm going to hook up a VGA monitor. I'm this thing has got VGA and DVI. And I'm currently going um, DVI into HDMI for the capture. I'm just going to hook up a VGA screen just in case it just doesn't like the HDMI conversion. Which would be dumb, but certainly not unheard of. Yeah, I'm getting punked by video capture. We have a cursor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it off, plug the drives in and turn it on. And I think we're there. So I've got no idea what actually fixed it at this point. Um, it looks like reseating the CPU was what did it. It didn't take the first time, but it did take the second time. So uh, maybe my guess is that I mentioned at the start of this um, video, I think, if it didn't get cut, that um, um, although CPUs aren't faulty very often, there is mileage in reseating them. And that seems to be what's happened here. It's possible this CPU has been running really, really hot because it, it's covered in dust. It was completely cooked. Thermal paste was baked. And that's going to cause thermal expansion. 
you know, the CPU and the socket are going to expand and contract and things like that. And that can cause the CPU to be just unsettled in the socket and pins not contacting properly, that kind of thing. So my guess is that that is what's happened here. And apparently just the second time around, there we go, there's our post logo. The second time around when I reseated it, it apparently took that time and now we're running. Um, also though, it did come back when we changed out the memory. It's possible that the memory again also needed a receipt. There can be more than one fault um, causing your issues. However, by going through all of this basic stuff, we've come up with a solution. And uh, yeah, I can hear the hard drive crunching away now while it very slowly starts booting up. We'll just wait for it to come up with a screen. Good grief, this thing's pretty painful. Just, just show me the login screen so I can wrap up the video. It can sit and take 15 minutes to start up when I'm not recording. <laughs> Bloody wireless keyboard was turned off, that's why it wasn't responding. It works. You know what, that's good enough for me. <laughs> You all saw the boot up screen. Everything else from here onwards is just software. This thing needs a good service. Um, starting with a good defrag, I think. It goes without saying that this computer is end of life. Uh, it was low spec when it was new and it hasn't gotten any faster over the years. Um, something, something, it's, you know, not really worth pursuing this. But I'll give it a quick once over because the customer uses it for office jobs and they're getting antsy about it. So, um, yeah, um, uh, I'll give it a um, I'll give it a defrag, and that will probably just immediately make it feel a lot better. Um, but other than that, that we've got it started. So um, no super exotic repairs today, but it does just go to show that just the old basics of just check the memory, reset the BIOS, check the CPU, dust it out, that kind of thing. All the classic tricks are still more than valid for a no post situation. And they certainly got this thing up and running again from a situation that looks like something was going to be broken. Uh, so that's all I've got for you today. Thank you very much for tuning in everyone and I will see you in the next video. Uh, bye for now.